Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So today's class is entitled, When Your Zeal is Gone, What's Next? All right. And it came about because some time ago, and I've also made mention of this, some time ago on Clubhouse, Captain Barnabas was answering someone's question. And he made a statement that has stuck with me since then. I've made mention it, of it many a times. He said to the he said to the person, I don't remember if it was a brother or sister, but he said, he said, My zeal has been gone. He said, I operate on faith now. And I was like, I'm listening. I had to give him a call like, Cap, you, I don't think you understand how heavy what you just said was, man. Because a lot of times we don't want to admit that the zeal, that fire that you have initially when you come into the truth has started to dwindle out. And when that fire or that zeal starts to dwindle, what do you do? What do you do to, 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 to be um, rejuvenated? What do you do to be reinvigorated? What do you do to, what, what revives you? That's what the scripture says about revival. What revives you, right? So we're going to open up with Mark chapter four. We're going to start there. Start at verse two. And I just thought of something too. That's my pen. Mark chapter four and verse two. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside mm -hmm. and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground uh -huh. where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. It had no depth of the earth. So I kind of, I want everyone to focus on verse five and verse six. Place a lot of your attention on verse five and verse six. Now we're going to continue to read down to like verse 20, but I want you all to put a little ax, asterisk, ask, how you say it? Asterisk? Yeah, asterisk. Ast, asterisk. Asterisk. Yeah. Yeah. That thing. Put it, <laughs> your little star thing. Not rim fram. Um, Put a little, you know, mark notation next to verse 5 and verse 6. Read verse 5 again. Verse 5. And some fell on stony ground mm -hmm. where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprung up because it had no depth of earth. Mm -hmm. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Mm -hmm. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some an hundredfold. Nice. So now we're reading about, we're reading a parable. But the great thing is that the Messiah gives the explanation as we read further down, right? So some, some may be confused. It might be the first time you're hearing this, this uh, chapter, this verse, these verses. Just give it, just give us a moment. We'll get to it. Go ahead. Verse nine. And he said unto them, he that had ears to hear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the 12 asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. So it says all these things are done in parables, right? Real quick. Jump ahead, Rue. We're going to come back to this verse. Go back. Go up to verse 34. Verse 34. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. So go back and read verse 11 again. Verse 11. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. So here's the thing. There are many that's going to know the brief overview of something or what it's parallel to. But greater understanding is only going to be given to some, meaning you're not going to get it. 
So I know a lot of times I know I enjoy when leadership brings out the, the deep prophecies and the mysteries and the dark sayings. Oh man, we yeah, we we salute hard after that class, right? But many of us are not honest that we really don't fully understand that. We really didn't digest it because God gives his doctrine in weight. It's not going to be given to everyone at the same time. You may all hear it at the same time, but you're definitely not all going to understand it equally. That's not going to happen, right? So the scripture says Christ always spoke in parables. When he was with the multitude teaching, he always spoke in parables, but he gave the understanding to his disciples because once Christ left the earth, who was left to teach? The disciples. So they had to have the greater understanding. This is why you should have questions. How is it that you'll have a bishop, deacon, captains visit you or in your congregation? You have no questions. It's because you're okay with the vague understanding or the basic understanding. You're okay with that. Your questions come about because there is growth happening in you. If you ain't got no questions, that means you ain't growing spiritually. Everybody should want to be fed what makes them grow. And right now we're talking about the bread of life. The bread of life is going to cause you to be well fed, well nourished, where you're not, you don't have itching ears to get answers other places. That's where the itching ears come from. Because, you're, you, because you don't want to get it in the right place, you start searching for it in all the wrong places. Like that old Buckwheat um, Saturday Night Live special. Walking for nub in all the wrong places. Walking for nub. Some of y'all walking for nub. But <laughs> Buckwheat. Keep reading. Unto you, verse 11. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Come on. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. It says, for them that are without, all these th things are done in parables. Go ahead. That seeing they may see and not perceive. So he's, what's the reason for it? Christ says, they're going to be able to see me teaching you, see these things happening, see the miracles, but they're not going to be able to grasp it. Go ahead. And hearing they may hear and not understand, mm. lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. It says if, if they really understood it and they really could see what was happening, they would be converted. So why are we still considered the most rebellious people? Because <laughs> we really don't want to know. We don't want to grow. We don't want to learn. A lot of us just go through the motions. What we, that's why I made mention to pay attention to verse 5 and verse 6. That spirit just went through the motions. But keep reading. Verse 13. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? So now, here's another thing. So when we... Uh, uh, you'll have the bishops and deacons, they'll be around. They're going to give understanding, but they're daggone sure going to ask you questions. Do you understand this? What does it mean? Explain it back to me. And that's when, you know, the little sweat over your brow start. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. Start, brother, start sweating. Like, bro, it's not even hot in here. It's winter time. Why the hell are you sweating? Um, yeah, I got open pores. <laughs> my, my pores are un enlarged. The hell? Because Christ asked them, don't you understand what I just said? He just asked them that. He asked them a question. Go ahead. Verse 14. The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, I know many of you have heard, especially in camp videos, when a scoffer comes, this is the scripture to go to, Right? Because they're coming to take the word away. But now Christ is going to give the explanation of what we read in verse 2 to verse 8. Right? Go ahead. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now this is 
the premise of the class. This also goes with verse 5 and verse 6. When you hear the word immediately, read it again, immediately what? Immediately receive it with gladness. So I think all of us fall into that first part. We heard the word and immediately receive it with gladness. I'm going to ask a question. How many of you brothers, when you first heard the truth, whether it was a video or whatever, you began to binge watch videos all day, all night, every day? Everybody. So everybody fits this. Immediately you received it. You was like, wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. You in the truth 10, 15, 20 years, you should still be getting wowed the same way. We got wild the last night. Found out some stuff. We was like, we've been breaking this down wrong the whole time. Every, all the captains in awe, like, wow. So year, many, you know, year, not when say many years, but years later, being in the truth, we still get wild. The learning never stops. Listen, when you call a bishop or a deacon and they tell you that they studying, I'm like, what? know it all but the study never stops because the lord constantly reveals more things it may be in your affliction your ears are opened it may be that there's the water is rising we're watching and we're praying the lord is revealing prophecies right before our eyes so now something a scripture you may have known all these years now makes sense because the prophecy was just fulfilled so these are all the things that happen in our spirits and should never stop happening because when it stops happening read verse 17 and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time that's what happens when you stop getting wowed by the scriptures when you stop getting wowed by the understanding and the growth as you can see both the body growing the wisdom growing all of these things growing if you stop getting wild, you were only meant to endure for a time. And that's sad. You in the truth five years to throw in the towel. You in the truth 10 years, 12, 15 years to throw in the towel. To go back to what? Saying that bunnies lay Easter eggs? Are you kidding me? Some of y'all, some of y'all, they still ain't get rid of your pastel suits. Got your gaiters and wingtips just waiting. Some of y'all sisters ain't throw away your pants. Got them in the back of the closet or been in the garage. Some of y'all still ain't get rid of it. If you ain't ready to shed all those abominations that you have dealt with, I ain't talking about the little, deal, not the little, but the day-to-day -day sins that we struggle with. I ain't talking about that. Because there's some things that's left on us to keep us humbled. But that damn sure ain't talking about pants, sisters. That daggone sure ain't talking about the pork chops you got in the deep freezer way at the bottom. Just in case. There's a, he, said, he said, look, pork was cheap, famine coming. Might as well. The Lord knows my heart. He knows it's desperately wicked. So all of these things coupled together, meaning what? There's only an endurance for a time. And one thing Christ did not give is the length of time. He did not say you endure for two weeks. He did not say you endure for two years. Some will be here for years and are never rooted. There's a saying that we have. A brother is here, but he's not here. Meaning physically the brother's here. But his spirit is not here. His spirit is surely somewhere else. Am I right? We say that. We say we talk amongst ourselves with certain things. We're trying to figure out the state of the flock and what's going on in the body, this, that, and the third. Some names will come up, and we give an account on what those brothers are doing in the body. Hey, that brother, he's here, but you wouldn't even know he's here. But go ahead. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So it says, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake. 
Now, here's the, here's the crazy part. Many only abide for a time for their own personal affliction. It has nothing to do with the word. We're, affi- we're afflicted and we go through trials and tribulations in our lives. But what Christ is talking about here, he said, for the word's sake, it's the mere fact that you know who you are, the mere fact that you're keeping God's laws, the mere fact that you stand stiffly for the laws in Christ and you're not wavering. Affliction will come behind that. But here's what we do. Big mama don't talk to me no more. So I'm leaving and going back with big mama. My, 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 my daughter won't uh, take care of me no more. So I'm going back to the world. That's happening in multiple congregations. Some, listen, some of your family members that's in the truth with you is that friend for an occasion. What does that mean? Okay, get, get, Jeremiah, can you get me that, please? It's in Sirach. Some are a friend. It's, it's off topic, but it, the thought just came to me. Some are, you'll, you'll have brothers, cousins, mothers, sisters, bro, you know, whatever, children in this truth. And the only reason they're here is because you provide certain benefits for them. Whether you're their ride, whether you're paying their bills, whether you're giving them housing. That's the only reason they're here. You got it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Read that. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. So it's scripture says some people are only here and doing with you because of the benefits you're provide you're providing. That's it. Once those benefits stop, they are gone. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Cap. So Cap, what you're saying is even your own flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Are opportunists. Flesh and blood. Hey, um that you said only here while the benefits arise, news flash, y'all. Some of those people are your kids. They're only they're only here because of the benefits. And when those benefits run out, because they're gonna get to a certain age where you're gonna be like, I'm not buying you that. Get it yourself. You can work. Then that's when you see, I don't wanna keep this truth no more. I'm out, mama. I'm out, daddy. So a lot of you all gotta get prepared for that that person in your family to go off into the wickedness that they are in, and you just got to let them go. That's just how it's got to be. The benefits run out, they're going to leave. They're there now because they are children, and you provide for them. Just set your mind to right. Absolutely. Read that again. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. I will not abide in the day of thy trouble. It says, but will not abide in the day of thy trouble. So you're giving them housing and let's say you know you might your hours may get cut at your job you're struggling now to pay that mortgage so on and so forth hey i'm gonna need you to get a job to help me pay this oh i didn't sign up for that uh-uh. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here i'm out of here and i'm out of the truth go ahead verse nine and there is a friend who being turned to enmity huh. and, and strife will discover thy reproach so now it says, but a friend can turn to enmity, can actually end up turning into your biggest enemy. Because there are things that those close family members know about you that maybe many in the congregation don't know about you. Right? Go ahead. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. Ooh. Like Cap said, you provide the food in that house, you provide the shelter. But when times get rough, they will not be there. So now, you know, sometimes the the way times get rough has nothing to do with finances. It has nothing to do with uh, work status or school status. Sometimes the household is just being corrected. And now the spotlight is on that household. And it's like, oh, oh, no, I didn't sign up for this. All my business is in the street. Who do they think they are? Them Negroes in purple. Look at his look at his glasses with his funny glasses. I even got wait, hold on, let me put it on first. Look at his funny glasses. Sometimes that's how the spotlight has to be on that household because leadership sees a spirit 
that's in that house that you don't see. You don't see it, but there are times that we see it, right? Go back. Was it Mark 4? Yes, sir. Mark chapter 4 and verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, hmm. and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So now, the deceitfulness of riches. I, I'm, it is things that I'm hearing about business practices in Israel, things of that nature, friendships turning into enmity over business practices. Listen, what we're reading, what we're reading is what Christ is, what we're going through is what Christ is telling us. There are some that you are so gung ho to get into business agreements with each other. That's what's going to be what pulls you out of the truth. That business practice that you want to get that you want to get accomplished so damn bad is going to be your downfall. Do y'all understand that? Because there are things that we, matter of fact, give me that in, um, is it Luke 16, 14? That which is esteemed among men, Luke 16, 14. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16 and verse 14. Come on. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things. Wait, wait, wait. What was the Pharisees? Covetous. A lot of the business practices are built off covetousness. I'm going to tell you straight. A lot of y'all from the truck, truckers to the rental agreements, brothers and sisters got going on and this, that all, a lot of it is pure covetousness. Go ahead. Heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before. But when, but when you question these brothers about certain business practices brought before you, they do what? They justify what? Yourselves before they men. They justify it. They justify covetousness. I'm Listen, all we can do is try to help you. With the word of God. We can't twist your arm. We can't uh, put you in a headlock. Though I would like to. There's a couple I want to. Sleep a hole. <laughs> what's that? What's that move? The iron sheik. Use? Hey, put up the iron sheik. I'm sorry. I, I know. I know. I told you we didn't have any articles, but. I, I, hey, 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 listen, the apostles wanted to call down fire. All I want to do is put you in a figure four leg lock. That's mercy. That's mercy. Put up figure four leg lock. Okay. Iron, no, the Iron Sheik had the camel clutch. I remember them things from when I was young watching WWE, jumping off the bunk bed, hitting my cousin in the head. Almost died myself. Hey, look, the I, it's, no, Iron Sheik camel clutch. That's what it's called. Y'all about to learn some wrestling moves today. That's the figure four leg lock. Yeah, yeah. Break that leg. Figure four leg lock. See that? Break a knee. <laughs> now do do the do the camel clutch. Camel clutch. Iron chic camel clutch. See, I ain't I ain't trying to call down fire from heaven. But ain't no hey, so, hey, cat put you in one of those. Have you out of commission. <laughs> the camel clutch. Oh, you said sister's some sister's legs too big? There you go, right there. Play that right there. I don't want to call on fire from heaven, but at times I want to put you in a camel clutch. <laughs> Y'all about to learn no man, get to the camel clutch, man. All that other stuff. There it is right there. Look at that. That's the camel clutch. <laughs> Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Look at his head. Stop sinning. All right, take it off. Take it off. <laughs> and the head of, I told your ass. That's, look, look, Nehemiah was doing the same. Not, not the camel clutch, but that's what he was doing. Nehemiah wasn't playing, so, oh, man, that was funny. All right, let's go back to the scriptures. Read that again. Luke uh, chapter 16 
Verse 15. Come on. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So what is, what, what is the topic at hand? The topic is covetousness. What we esteem is covetousness, meaning there are brothers who choose to work on the Sabbath day to make more money. That's your choice. Some of y'all never have never asked for the Sabbath though. If you just give the excuse, oh yeah, I work on I work on a Sabbath. What, what's what's wrong with you? What you're doing is you're 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 setting your lot. And your lot could be only enduring for a time because you have, have esteemed your covetousness over God. And God said that is an abomination. You got some care? All right. Let's go back to Mark. I hope y'all I hope y'all understand that. I hope y'all understand. And listen, and we don't we ain't feeling no pity. Don't come to me with your damn faulty business agreements. Don't come to me with your business contracts. Because here's the thing. A lot of times we'll give y'all counsel and y'all don't take it. We'll tell brothers, don't deal with that brother with this business. Don't do it. Why? Because the brother has a history of destroying other business practices. And what do you do? Because the deal that he brings to you is so grandioso. You want to make so much money that you can't refuse. But you can refuse it. But if you're covetous, you won't refuse it. Go ahead, Cam. Hey, real quick, just going back, because you made a statement. You said counsel has went forth, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. told a brother or a sister, hey, it's not wise to deal with X, Y, and Z. The spirit's not right for one. Some of them were in the midst of sin because of old past dealings. But y'all understand the most high is in the midst of that counsel. Oh, yeah. He's in the midst of that judgment. Let me show you something real quick. Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're just going to, y'all can read it on your own, but we want the main point of verse 36 pertaining to uh, Jehoshaphat. All right. 36 to 37. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 36. As a matter of fact, start at 35. 35. 35. Mm -hmm. And after this, the Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined himself with uh, Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. So here you have a king Jehoshaphat joined himself to King Isaiah, a, a, a nigger in terms, evil. Read. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. So they had a business deal right there. You know what? Hey, brother, look, I got these ships right now. You know, we able to float them to Tarshish. Many of you brothers and sisters have, hey, sis, uh, I got a business plan here with the fringes. Or, hey, brother, I got a trucking company here. You know, we could make all this money going to Texas and, and, and come on back. And you'll keep the Sabbath. Meanwhile, you don't keep not one Sabbath. Read. And they made the ships in Zion Gibor. Uh -huh. Then Eliezer, the son of Do Dodava of the Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat. No saying, difference than, than what us, the deacons, the bishops, and the captains, when we give you counsel, we prophesy. Look, X, Y, and Z is going to happen because this brother and sister, their business practices are completely out of order. Meanwhile, y'all give us the middle finger. Read, saying, because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works. What did the Lord do? Broken thy works. And what happened? Come on. And the ships were broken, and they were not able to go to Tarshish. That's why all hell breaks loose at the Dang. end of that business transaction. That's a cold script right there, bro. Let's go back to Mark. Mark, chapter 4 and verse 20. And these are they which are... Uh, go back to 19. Verse 19, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty and some an hundred. So now over a process of time, what happens with those that it's sown on good ground? Over time, they're going to endure the same things that the first two endured. The cares of the world, they're going to endure that. They're not going to be taken by the cares of the world. They're not going to be taken by the deceitfulness of riches. They're not going to be taken by lust. Meaning what? They overcome those things. All what we read, they're all going to endure the same things. 
They're all going to have the zeal when they come in. They're all going to be uh, uh, for the word's sake. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Verse 17. Read that. Verse 17. Verse 17. And have, not, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arise, it for the word's sake. So all of these that we read, Bishop did a class many years ago to three types of Israelites. And he went in depth about these three types of Israelites. Now, guess what? All three types in, is going to is going to have to go through affliction for the word's sake. All three types. All three types are going to have to go through verse 19, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust, so on and so forth. All of them are going to have to endure that. But the good ground is going to overcome those things. Does everybody understand that? The good ground will overcome it. So read that verse 20 again. Verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel? All right. So now, <clears throat> when verse 15 and verse 16, I'm sorry, verse 16 and verse 17, verse 5 and verse 6, which are parallel or the explanation of when those things happen, like what do you do? When, 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 when you heard the word, you received it, immediately you sprang up. You're like, man, you want to tell everybody you're an Israelite. What do you what do? You do? Once that's happening and there's a decline that starts, what, what do you do? Somebody help me. What do you do? What are some things that you do? Everybody's scared. Look at nobody. Oh, it's all right. Listen, there's really no wrong answer. Everybody has a method of how to whether keep that zeal going or step into the next phase of whatever it is. All right. We're going to have, I want a few answers. So what, What's, what do you, what do you do? Anybody, anybody. Shalom. Shalom, leadership. Uh, Shalom. Pray, fast, and ask that the Lord build your spirit. Okay. Pray, fasting. Very good. Anybody else? I feel like you can turn this mic up real quick. Eight. Shalom, leadership. Uh, one thing that you can do if you're battling with uh, a lack of zeal, look up a class on zeal. Okay. Good. Good. To, re to reinforce what you already know, right? Good. But he, I, I'm sorry. He, here's I want re, hey, read. Um, don't 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 sit down, Malachi. Yes, sir. Read verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. And have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time. So now, the brother said to pray, study, pray, and ask the Most High. For you know, to be strengthened. The brother said, watch a class. So here it says, and have no root. What is everybody's root in here? The truth. Okay. Can I just yell out? Christ. Christ. Okay. The laws. Okay. So all of these things are the root, right? The laws in Christ, right? The Bible, things of that nature. That's the root. So what is verse 17 saying? Have no root in themselves. What is that saying? So if you have no root in you, are you going to put on a class? No. Are you going to go to the Lord? No. Y'all understand the problem? So what is this saying? When the zeal is gone, what do you do? There's something that you have to do. And your answers are right. That's if, that's if you still have the spirit of the Lord on you. Y'all right. understand that, right? You have to be able to recognize what is happening in your spirit. Everybody understand that? You okay. have to be able to recognize what is going on in your spirit. There's times when things are brought out to a brother or to a sister, and y'all are clueless. Hey, bro, you sure you all right? I see you doing this. I see you doing that. You moving this way. You moving that way. Uh, really? Remember Smokey in the dam uh, when, they, when, when he was smoking Sherm? And he was looking at himself like, <laughs> like me? Yeah, you. How, you gonna, uh, how is someone else going to see more in your spirit than you see in your own? That don't even make sense. That means there is no examining yourself happening. Ha examining? Did I say that? Examining yourself. <laughs> That's what them coffees. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Malachi. 
Yes, sir. Malachi 3 and 16. Uh, okay. With elderly brothers, like when you counsel, you don't counsel across, across or down. You you always counsel up. So oh, I reach out. I, like I reach that. out to uh, brothers that's been in the walk. Like, let's say if you're weak in the face of anything, you you call those senior men to get that counsel because that can help you. That builds your faith up. For me, hey, I like that. The brother says you don't counsel laterally. You don't counsel down, you counsel up. Damn, I like that. It's a call. Make that a class. I like that. Counsel up. I like that. Because that that is an ongoing thing. You you in the truth four years, you counsel with somebody who's been in the truth a year. Y'all crazy. Amazing. But he did. <laughs> hey, um, let's go to because here's here's something that happens. Let's go to Sirach chapter eighteen. So you, the zeal is dwindling, and something starts to happen in your spirit, right? Sirach eighteen verse six. Sirach chapter eighteen and verse six. As for the wondrous works of the Lord, there may nothing be taken from them, neither may anything be put under, unto them, neither can the ground of them be found out. So now, the works of the Lord, none of us can add to his wonderful works. The Lord made the heavens. The Lord made the earth. Can any of us add to the heavens? Can any of us add to, can, can we make our own better variation of trees and birds? No, none of us can add to it. Neither can any of us take away. We're unable to do that, right? Go ahead. When a man had done, then he beginneth. And when he leaveth off, then he shall be doubtful. So now, when a man is doing work, he's beginning a great thing. Everybody understand that? So when you're in this truth laboring, you're doing a good thing. You're, 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 you're um, further establishing the work that the Lord already did. Because he called the prophets from when? From the beginning. So prophets were in the earth long before you. So you doing the work now is the beginning of another what generation of prophets. But read the next part again, the bottom part. And when he leaveth off, then he shall be doubtful. But when you stop doing the work because your zeal is gone, doubt starts to resonate in your spirit. You start to think, are we even the Israelites? Now you a damn apologist wrapped in tinfoil doing Michael Jackson's spin moves, stealing R. Kelly's whole style. And now you in full subjection to the white man, Mark Riser. Because what? Your zeal started to fade away. You stopped doing the work. Therefore, doubt kicked in. Damn, Satan got your black ashy behind. Read it again. When a man had done, then he beginneth. And when he leaveth off, then he shall be doubtful. Then he shall be doubtful. Just like um, in, when you read Deuteronomy 28, you'll hear shall, 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 shall go into captivity, shall have yokes of iron, shall, 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 meaning future prophecy, meaning it will happen. We're trying to safeguard you from some things as well as ourselves. When we teach, we're actually reminding ourselves of a lot of things. We ain't just talking. We got we to gotta implement these things too because the minute these things come out, the Lord is also holding us accountable. Okay, you're doubting. I mean, your, your zeal is gone. Now you start to doubt. What you going to do? Hey, hey, Caps, what y'all doing? Like like, like uh, Malachi just said. Hey, what y'all doing, man? Yeah, I'm going to come hang with y'all, man. Because you know when you hang with godly men, the discourse is going to be what? It's going to be godly. Ain't nobody talking about no damn strip clubs. Ain't nobody talking about uh, the, the making money at the dice game and who we going to rob. No, when these men speak, even if it's even if the Bible's not open, their words are the oracles of God. 
They're going to quote scriptures. Even when we joke, we joke with things referring to the scriptures. So the discourse is always godly. Hey, some of y'all sisters need to learn that too. I'm going to tell y'all straight. Are we, listen, we're going to stay on y'all sisters until y'all start correcting one another and holding each other accountable or we're going to stay on your ass. I'm going to camel clutch y'all like we just saw on TV. Y'all all, all want to be overly nice to each other, don't want to offend one another. No, hold each other accountable that they, you don't fall into sin. Y'all see a sister come in here, uh, damn skirt too tight, nobody want to say nothing. Y'all see cleavage showing. Why, why we got to be up here and tell y'all sisters to go tell that sister something is going on with her garment or her outfit? Oh, I, I don't want to offend. I want to be, because, you know, sisters say, oh, it's because it's always something is going to come of it. It's going to be too much. And I say this all the time. When it reaches our ears, it's not why did you correct her? When it reaches our ears, we're going to ask, why didn't you correct her? You don't get backlash for doing what God said. Go ahead, Cap. Real quick, Cap, you're in the spirit. Luke 9, 26. Luke chapter 9, verse 26 for you sisters. Let's see here. And you brothers, too. Because some of y'all with that friend sugar honey iced tea crap, too. Oh, I'm afraid to correct the brother because he may not like me. Read Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words. Stop right there. You see your brother, you see your sister in air, they're in sin and you're afraid to correct them. Well, Christ is saying you're ashamed of his laws. You're ashamed of his words. But let's see what's the payment for that. Read. Of him shall the son of man be ashamed. Mm. Read. When he shall come in his own glory. When Christ return, come on. And in his fathers and of the holy angels. You see that thing right there? So the main, the main point right there says that the son of man will be ashamed. Meaning what? Y'all ain't getting the kingdom. You're afraid to correct your brother and sister. This whole Bible's about correction. You're going to be corrected. Go ahead, Cap. Hey, if you're afraid to correct one another, it's because you still got a Christian mindset. You're, you're, still, you're, you're still in Christianity. You don't have the mindset of the real Christians. You have the mindset of Christianity. Christianity is you can't judge me. So therefore, no correction happens in that institution. None. Now, when we in here, we got to operate. Because are you men the prophets of God? Yes, sir. Are you men the prophets of God? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. The prophets always corrected. Always. And I'm not. And, and listen, don't take what I'm saying as a, a green light to be malicious to one another. That's what some of y'all will do. You heard what Cap said. Your beard is two inches too short. The brothers will go overboard. And then I got a camel clutch they ass too. It's camel clutch season. Trying to tell y'all something. It's not, it's, not, it's, not a, a, it's not a green light to be malicious to one another. And here's something that I witness, especially when it comes to the sisters. When sisters correct one another, it's taken as hatred. It's met with aggression and disrespect. So you disrespect the one who's correcting you. But when leadership says it to you, oh, shalom. Deacon, shalom, captain, shalom, bishop. I would never, never be disrespectful to any sister. Not me. We're about to put some more cameras in here and start putting y'all, 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 what y'all doing on the screen. A couple weeks ago, I just called names out on patient saints. Next time, we're going to go to the videotape. Show your mannerisms. Play the audio showing how you're talking to, whether it be other sisters that's talking to you in the congregation or correcting you. That was, that's, that's what needs to be done. Go ahead, Kai. Oh. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus 5. Sirach chapter 5 and verse 2, I believe it is. Sirach chapter 5 and verse 2. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. So when you leave off from the work, you actually start to doubt, like we just read. 
then you start to follow your own doubtful mind. That don't make no sense. Like the brothers had all had good answers. You, you fast, you pray, you communicate with other brothers, like-minded spirits. But what happens is if your mind is already in a doubtful phase, why are you going to begin to trust that doubtful mind? No, you go to the, as, you, as Malachi said, you counsel up. A lot of y'all be scared to tell your leaders what's really going on. Y'all think y'all think y'all come in this truth. Come, let, me, let me say this. You come in this truth. You've been here a month. Do you think you've gotten rid of your whoremongering spirit in a month? Sisters, you think y'all got rid of the horror spirit in a month? The lying spirit, the, the vainglorious spirit, envy, hatred. Y'all think two, three, four months, a year, you got rid of that? But guess what you don't do? You don't say anything. You don't say that you're covetous. You don't say that you're hateful. You don't say nothing. I'm all good in the love of Jesus. No, listen, you got to come in like, yo, listen, I'm effed up. I'm going to be honest with you. Bishop, I'm messed up. I have this going on, that going on. Pray for me. Go ahead, Cap. That's the thing. Like even for that, for Bishop, Bishop Yawasab, Bishop Nathaniel, the deacons, don't think that they, these men can't see straight through you. Man. They see the spirit on you, but they just won't tell you. It's for you to bring that thing forward, that you may be healed, that you could be prayed over. You're not fooling nobody. They say it all the time. You're not, trust me, you're not fooling these men. Right. You, you definitely ain't fooling them. But the thing is, when we read the parable about, uh, how does it go? I think, I think it's in Luke 8 with them praying, or it's in Luke, with the Pharisees and the publican praying, and he smote upon his breasts. Yeah, I'm like, not like him. Where, where was that again? I think it's, I know it's in Luke, but I forget the verse. Luke 8, Luke, help me out. Come on, you bro, why is brother acting like they ain't, go, they ain't got Google? Man, Google the dad, Google, Google the scripture. Try to act like y'all know where it's at. What the hell? Brothers ain't study all damn week. All of a sudden, I'm not, it's going to come uh, to Luke 18 and 11. Luke 18. Okay, all praises. It was an 8 in there somewhere. Luke 18, verse 11. Thank you, Cap. Luke chapter 18 and verse 11. Start at 10. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Mm -hmm. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus. So, so now, start at verse 9, actually. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he spake this parable unto unto certain which trusted in themselves that they so were now <laughs> and he hold on Jeremiah hold yes, on sir. Officer. Yes, yes sir and he spake hold, hold on <laughs> yes sir yes sir <laughs> that brother said listen I'm reading all the words good so I'm gonna just keep going here's, here's what we have to uh, l equate ourselves to are we those that fully trust in ourselves because it says the ones who trusted themselves were the Pharisees, meaning they think they got it all together. Y'all understand that, right? The Pharisees thought they had it all together. So you're here a month, two months, a year, even two years, three years, and you haven't sought out counsel for the affirmities that you're dealing with? Oh, you, you trust in yourself. Either you, don't, either you don't trust the men of the Lord or you trust in yourself. Either way, you're in folly. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Go ahead. Which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Woo! I know. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got brothers. Yeah, you got brothers talking about, uh, is there anything else you could teach me in the Bible? Because I know it all. Negro. Hey, matter of fact, the last brother I heard say that he fell out. Yeah. He's gone. He started teaching a flat, flat earth. earth doctrine. Okay. Keep trusting all you brothers. I don't give a damn how many precepts you can retain. You trust in yourself, you in the spirit of the Pharisees. 
you are oh so righteous. You know all the breakdowns because you got a good memory. Most of I put your ass in a car accident, you forget where your name is. You forget how to walk. You got a, a drink through a damn sippy cup for the next six months. You keep playing with the Lord, trusting in yourself. Go ahead. Oh, you going to say something, Kat? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And despised others. It, they did what? Despised others. So remember I just mentioned that either you trust in yourself or you don't trust leadership. It was just covered in that one verse. You despise others. I'm not going to tell them my business. Yeah, they're, they're men of the Lord that brought out the scriptures and, and I woke up and I know I'm Israel now. I got to keep the laws of God. Yeah, I understand that, but psh, they're not good enough to know what I'm going through. Nope. Okay. Okay. So, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, read that, read the bottom part of that again. Which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Damn. And then you know what's so funny? Like, I know y'all, y'all captains can understand this. When leadership started asking us questions with Paul's letters, remember, we were confident, like, okay, this talking about this, that, and that, because we bring it out for years. Then they're like, yeah, we know you bring it out like that, but that's not what it really means. <laughs> then they gave the understanding. It, it keeps you humbled. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes the, the correction be leaving that knot in your chest. You be like, damn, that hurt. But guess what? It keeps you humbled. So therefore, yes, you can go to these men with whatever you're battling with, your infirmities, and get the remedy according to the word of God. If you trust in yourself, you've already made up your mind that you're only going to endure for a time. It goes right back to Mark chapter 4. You trust in yourself, you've already made up your mind. So when you, whatever, whichever brother you are talking about you already know it all, you sitting in the midst of the bishops, you sitting in the midst of the deacons talking about you know it all, or acting like you know it all, or in your spirit saying you know it all, you're only here for a time. You and all the precepts you know is going to be out of here. But keep reading. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. So now he's trusted in himself. God, I'm thankful I don't forget scriptures like these other brothers. <laughs> Lord, I know you imparted me with a special anointing because I ain't like these forgetful niggas. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Extortioners, uh -huh. unjust, uh -huh. adulterers, mm -hmm. or even as this publican. Even like this guy sitting right next to me. Bro, what's wrong with you? You don't know how to break down Daniel 12? You don't know how to break down Daniel 7 off the back without looking in your Bible? You know, we got to look at the notes sometimes. You don't know what the ten heads is? Seven heads, ten horns. You don't know what that is? Okay. All right, brother. All praises. All praises that the Lord gave you that spirit. I ain't like this nigga right here. Go ahead. I fast twice in the week. Hmm. So now you start justifying yourselves unto why you deserve to have that spirit. Or why you deserve to be in that position. You should always feel like I'm not worthy of my position. The Lord has to have seen something in you to place it in leadership to get you into that position. It ain't. Listen, I'm going to tell you straight. I can, I can speak for those who've been here for some time in these leadership roles. You know, the Captain Oshias, the Captain Shems, the Captains up here. The deacons, Captain Hananiah, Cap Deacon Isaac, Deacon Yash, all these men, because we know them personally, labored without looking for a reward at the end. As far as, I'm going to do this work, but IUIC got to pay me. Or I'm going to do this work, I got to get a position. All the labor was done out of the love of the Lord. The Lord has all the labors. We just read all his works. Nobody can add to or take away from. 
All we can do is be glad that he allowed us to do work in his vineyard. Shoot, we could go back to being crackheads. We can go back to being a, a cut up on the street because you, you walk in, you, you a street walker and a dude cuts you up and raped you. You could go back to that. That's the life many of us came out of. Some of you dudes were the street walkers getting your booty cut. I'm just saying. I can't wait. Who invited uh, Four Corners News uh, to Atlanta here? <laughs> yeah, we are in Atlanta. I can't even say that. You're right. We in Atlanta. You never know. Somebody got booty. Somebody got razor blade cuts on the booty right now. Right now. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, written, it's in the law for a reason. But keep reading. This is about to go left. I feel it going left. We're going to keep it. We're going to yeah, bring it back. Go ahead. I fast twice in the week. So he's justifying himself before men. We read it earlier. Go ahead. I give tithes of all that I possess. You see that? Some of y'all give donations, give um, help, give, you know, sometimes even information. And you think there has to be a reward for it. Well, your reward is going to come from God if it's done sincerely. The Lord is going to reward you for every bit of labor of love that you put into this truth. God is taking account and he will repay you for it. Go ahead. Cap, I'm going to make, I'm going to put something. I got to, I'm sorry. I got to throw a brick at a spirit. It may not be there on them, but it, it could, it has the potential. Brothers and sisters, if you give alms, let's just say you well, do you it. You should give alms. Yeah, right. <laughs> you do it all online. Okay. Or you do, you know, on your computer, you'll send it from your bank account. You have the, the email of that specific school that that arms is going to, there should be no reason for you to come. If, if you see that transaction go through, you want to ask if the school got the transaction, sister, brother, the arms was for the body. Once you released it, that's it. You gave it to Jesus. You gave it to the Lord. <laughs> You, it, it's kind of like almost that Christian mentality. Well, I want to know what you're doing with my arms. Hey, you gave the arms for the betterment of the body. No one asked the disciples that in the book. Not of Acts. at all. They didn't Absolutely. ask how you. It says it, 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 it says that it was given to disciples and he distributed as men had need. You didn't go to them and, and monitor who was getting what. Nah, we, you, you don't do that. Go ahead, Cap. My point to that, though, is Cap. They'll also throw the number out there of how much they gave trying to show what they do just like you said yeah i gave ten thousand but just like you said the lord is going to bless you you know the lord is going to bless you abundantly so you don't have to let us know hey and you know what you have to always remember the lord can replace you as as easily as you came through these doors is as easily he can send you back out and replace you because you know what's funny there has to be another purge coming it has to be. But for some reason, every time the purge happens, we grow. So some of you have, it's, it's like trimming the fat. In order to get the best cut, sometimes you got to trim the meat, right? In order to get the best results, the best laborers, the best thinkers, the best organizers, the best discipline, the best obedient sisters, things of that nature, sometimes you got to get rid of some spirits. And the Lord is always shaking the tree. Them leaves going to fall where they may. It's going to be sisters who actually don't have a problem with the garment. At some point, at some point, there's going to be sisters who don't have a problem with the garment. At, at some point. I know it ain't now, but at some point. And this goes for you sisters who've been here for years and still wear regular clothes. Every, every different color, every Sabbath. Yeah, okay. If you've been here for some time, you've been fellowshipping for some time, you should be in one mind and one spirit and saying, wait a minute, all these sisters got on purple, but I got on gray. Okay. Unless you just enduring for a time, for a time, you never get a garment because you already know it's going to come a point that I'm going back to where I came from. Right, 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 right. right. I don't want to spend no money because right. I'm going to eventually leave. Oh, you said the glass bottom high heels in her closet and the yeah. I'm the, going back to those. She's going back to those eventually. And got the the baby oil for the stripper pole. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Read that. Hey, cat. And, and, and hey, again, uh -huh. the, and they always say I, I don't have the money for this, or they oh, making yeah. me. They they always yeah. want to spend all this money. Yeah. I, I seen something about a sister complaining about buying a head wrap. 
It's oh, too, really? Oh, yeah. 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 I, it's too much money. We got to spend all this money. A hair wrap is, I don't, I, I'm sure it ain't that much money. $2? $2, $2, $3? Walmart? You'll use that as an excuse to not do it, too. Yeah, hey, I got Only for a time. Only for a time. Hey, so, Cap. I ain't that. never heard a brother complain about a shirt. We are nope. brothers beg to get the purple and gold. We gotta, yeah. t- hey brother, you gotta take that shirt off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sisters they don't want the unity. Yeah, they don't want the unity. I'm gonna cut y'all tails in the back. I don't want to hear, hey brothers in the back with no black shirt. Talk about bring it out. <laughs> I know they gotta wear plain clothes, but you should be trying to get to that black shirt. <laughs> Talk about bring it out. <laughs> I'm on your head today too. <laughs> the cuts continue. Damn, I forgot where I was now. Y'all, y'all, uh, yeah, bring it back. Where was it? Luke? Okay, Luke 18, Luke, you're yeah, just, Luke 18, justifying Luke 18. yourself. There's justifying right, right, right. Luke chapter 18, verse 13. And the publicans standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, "God, be merciful to me, a sinner." Mm. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now, I want you to, you know, you know what it is, you know what it is to, as I may mention, when you're, when you're, when you're mentioning your faults and what you struggle with to those counselors, right? You're actually humbling yourself. Because here's what I want you to think. You have to humble yourself to a certain level to, to tell some of the most intimate things that you may have never told anybody. That is a level of a contrite and broken spirit. You've already exhausted all other options. Before you came in here, you exhausted all your options. The Lord humbled you to the point where you came through these doors. Now you come through these doors and you want to be high-minded or or haughty or you want to trust in yourself well you trust in yourself is what got you in trouble out there because you thought your way was better than every other way that was written but your way was better than god that's what got your behind in trouble out there now you come in here you feel you're going to do the same exact thing no that means you you don't want to get healed That means you don't want the answers. You don't want to get better. You want to be a stagnant brother, a stagnant sister that's only going to endure for a time. Where were we before this? We was back in Mark 4. All right, let's let's go to, read that verse one more time, matter of fact. Verse 13. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, Mm -hmm. but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Okay. Now, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 14. Real quick. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So now... You know what happens to us? <clears throat> we'll be zealous or have zeal about certain things. But we're not zealous about all things pertaining to God. So the brother will be zealous when the bishops bring out a deep prophecy class. Oh, the zeal is there. But we'll say, hey, brothers, we need brothers to clean up the school. There is no zeal now. Like, oh, hell, I ain't doing it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Why, why does that shift? But that, isn't that still pertaining to the Lord? Is it not? Because here's the thing. You are the same way, because I was, you know, how Christ um, chose the 70, sent them out two by twos, right? And he said he sent them out before he went. So they were pretty much doing the same thing John the Baptist did. They were making the way for Christ's coming. So before Christ went into many of these regions, he already had two brothers there teaching about his coming. Do you think these men had, uh, 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 they they were in a position to kind of guide the people to get them ready for Christ's coming? They was, them sure they were zealous about that. But then 
those 12 had to do what? They had to prepare the Passover. They had to find the, the, the space. They had to find the, the, uh, the, the, the lamb to slaughter. They had to make, get him into the city on the ass's cult. There was, biz, there was um, other facets of it that had to be taken care of. It wasn't only prophesying. Y'all understand that? But the zeal to prepare the feast, the zeal to prepare the food, all of that stuff, all of that has to be on the same level as when you're standing next to the Messiah and he's bringing out these deep understandings. So here we sit among bishops and the deacons and they bring out the deep understanding. Y'all, y'all, I see the zeal. The brother's like, whoa, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But now when it comes to getting affairs in order, I was like, it's now grievous to them. That same zeal because the apostles had to get things in order for Christ. They had to get it in order. It's the same thing today. There are things that must be set in order and we must have that same zeal like we did when we're getting those deep breakdowns. Yeah, that's okay. heavy. Because if everybody took that same pride in their office, right. the bishop's classes would be flawless. Imagine if you right. never had to wait on, right, on right, IT right, or anything. Right, 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 I tell right, the teams right. that all the time. The things that we do enable those classes and those understandings to come out. Mm -hmm. If they don't have to worry about all these other things that's going on, then the understanding will be there. That's right. like when you read Acts 6. It says they gave themselves wholly right. to the word. Right. But they can't do that if they got to handle everything else. Right. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey y'all y'all know we get on the offices, man. We oh man. We uh, that micromanaging, if we if you got a task, you should be able to carry it out without us having to come behind you and micromanage. T to me, I would feel ashamed if I'm given a task and I, and of course I didn't if I didn't carry it out right now, a deacon or another captain has to come to me and say, Hey, why didn't you do it this way? I'm I actually get ashamed. Like, damn, I messed up. I'm a, I call Cap. Yo, Cap, damn, I messed up, bro. I, I don't get it. Why do, why do we have to treat grown men, grown women, like we treat four-year-olds? That makes no sense. But at your job, you you employee of the month. Got your picture right next to the fries. Cap, you got to do that because the class... The zeal is gone. Right, right. That's right. why you got to do it. That's right. Hey, um, oh, uh, Cap, uh, Cap brought up a good point. Let's go to um, Ezra chapter 5. The book of Ezra chapter 5 and verse 1. Start there. Ezra chapter 5 and verse 1. Then the prophets Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo prophesied unto the Jews that were, in Ju that were in Judah and Jerusalem, in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Uh -huh. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. Wait, 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 wait. Where were the prophets of God? With them, and with them were the prophets of God helping them. Let me tell you something. You know why you shouldn't have a lack of zeal to do every office? Because every single office that you're in, everybody up here, up to the deacons, the bishops, have all done what you're doing. Y'all understand that, right? Because there were floors here before you got here. So before you got here, there was someone cleaning the floors. Guess who those people were? I, I remember in our first school, we was fighting who because we only had one mop and one bucket. The school wasn't no bigger than this than the tech booth over there. We 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 who gonna mop tonight? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I remember when brothers was coming after uh camp one. We had camp one on one on Sundays, and we mopping. I'm I'm showing brothers how to mop. Now I learned that skill set at my first job, my little high school job, scooping ice cream. I learned how to mop. Mister Ice Cream Man. Yes. <laughs> Before Master P, damn it. <laughs> but showing brothers, why? Because that, I mean, it is what it is. The sanctuary had to be cleaned. 
So a lot of our brothers is like, oh, why, why the brothers got a mop? Why this? Why the soldiers got a mop? Well, before you was doing that, leadership was doing that. We came in in your position, not knowing anything, not knowing up from down, just happy to get these precepts and apply them. Happy. And I'm about to go left. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I, you know, I'll go on a tangent in a minute. So read that again. Verse two. Verse two. Then rose up Zerubbabel. Hey, brothers, you you got a. <laughs> I know, you got a whole brothers hostage to get videos edited. But the first editor was Bishop Nathaniel. Bring it on. So a lot of the videos that you watched coming in, it was Bishop Nathaniel that edited them. Website building, Bishop Nathaniel was doing it. Y'all don't understand, man. These things were being done before you got here. So you should be happy that you're able to do it now so that those stories, like when Bishop tells us, deacons tell us, you can now give that same thing to a brother. But some of y'all ain't got no war stories, no labor stories. You ain't got nothing to tell. So guess what? Only here for a time. This is time's hey, right back together. And I'm going to say it every time because I like that statement Deacon Abiel said. He said, I was a deacon before I was a rapper. That's right. Uh -oh. Many of y'all brothers have no war stories, but y'all fabricate war stories to y'all songs. Damn, young thugger. Oh, man. Damn. Little Uzi Vert. Never been to camp, but got all kind of wars. Oh, Lord, y'all about to take it somewhere else. Hey, I'm sorry. Read that one more time. <laughs> Verse 2. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel. And Joshua, the son of Josedek, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. All these, all these uh, prophets that you see, all have labored for the Lord's sake. There are chairs here because someone before you got here, they thought chairs are needed for those who are coming in. You know, Esau has that movie, what is it called, Field of Dreams? And he said, if we build it, they will come. So there was way more chairs in here than there were bodies. So Esau took what the prophets are doing and made it into a movie, and some of y'all went and saw that thing. Probably shed a tear. Had ghosts coming out the damn cornfield playing baseball. No, we got the living dead coming through these doors repenting. That's right. Esau took what the Bible says and made it into a fictional movie, and we all, not all, but those who saw it thinking it's something. No, we doing, we doing the, real, the real work here. Before, before anybody filled up, it was mad empty seats in here. Most I was like, yo, build my house, and they're going to come. It is what it is, right? Um, real quick, second, jump to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and start at verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready, to, ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. So now it says Achaia was ready a year ago. They was ready a year ago. Now this is fairly much given into in, uh, fairly much going into giving, right? Because Paul had many issues with the church of Corinth when they didn't want to help the prophets in various ways, right? Financially, uh, out of helping them just being respectful so that the rest of the congregation will respect them. It was always a battle that Paul had with the church of Corinth, right? But go ahead. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, I, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest happily if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we that we say not ye should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Right. So he says, listen, I'm trying to get y'all ready. So if those that come after me, they're going to find out you're all full of it. But guess what? Achaia had the zeal that should have affected the church of Corinth. Achaia was in the spirit. That's what Paul's saying. Achaia was in the spirit. 
So their zeal should have affected the church of Corinth, but it, it, the church of Corinth was acting like Negroes. Finish verse 5. Verse 5. Therefore I thought, thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, bounty mm -hmm. whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of might, as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. Right. So the blessing or the generosity that you had wasn't because of covetousness, but because you really wanted to help the, the push the truth. Right. But let's go to first Corinthians 16 and 15, because Paul made a very bold statement. He says, Achaia was a zeal that should have been an example to you, but y'all not learning nothing. So I made this statement about, um, what the, the the works the bishops was doing. He was one printing the flyers and all that stuff. The works that the deacons and the captains, so on and so forth, was doing. These are the things that they were being done. Hopefully, the zeal that they had 15, 20, 30 years ago will fall upon us today. Make sense? Some of y'all look clueless. I'm going to tell you straight. But, Lord's will, you get it. Read that. 1 Corinthians 16, 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15. 15. Come on. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephan Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia. So now it's the same place. Stephanus was the first fruit, meaning the first one who woke up in Achaia. But let's look, see what they did. And that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So how can they be an example to the church of Corinth? They could be an example because they were addicted to the scriptures addicted to the gospel addicted to doing the work so paul says listen you need to look at Achaia, Achaia, and say look these brothers is in the spirit right here and he specifically mentioned stephanus says they addicted themselves so that's why i said some of y'all brothers was right when we asked when the zeal starts to get on the decline what do you do some said watch videos. Some said pray and fast. These are things that you must do. You know what it is? Sometimes you need to just say to a, to a counselor, I don't feel the same about the truth like I used to. You being honest, right? But some of y'all are so damn scared to talk about your flaws, you're going to let your flaws take you out. You think you can hide a demon? You can't hide that thing. Go ahead, go ahead. There's a lot of y'all that will mask the demons you battle by always pointing out the faults in other people. Right. Right. That's the smoking mirror. You're the first one to come and tell what somebody else is doing, but you never confess or say anything pertaining to what you got going on. Check, check. I'll say this too. Um, us sitting in the position that we do as captains over some of the IUIC schools, you hear Bishop um, and the deacon say it all the time that this place is a, a spiritual hospital, right? Um, some of you all have problems mentally um, and spiritually uh, that you need to uh, be relieved of. Now, the, the reason why a lot of you can't be relieved of those things as captains going into is because you, you keep them to yourself and you hide those things. And um, in the world, what does Esau do when he um, he got something wrong with his mind? Anybody, you can just say it. What do they do, Esau? They do what? They go to therapy. They All therapy is is just talking it out. Y'all come in here and keep all the problems that you got to yourself until you bug out and you leave. It'll be like, what's going on? I just don't have it no more. No, what is plaguing you is the problem that you were afraid to speak to leadership about. Just talk and get it off your chest so you can be healed of those things. And then once you, you, you are healed, you can addict yourself to the ministry, but you can't do those things because you ain't got over the hump yet of talking the things, the problems you got out or that you got with yourself. Get those things out. Talk to your leadership. Talk talk to the officers and things so you can get over there and then begin to addict yourself to this ministry so you don't end up being that one that only endures for a short time. Because we don't want that for none of you. Our job is to watch for your soul. But we can't watch for your soul if we don't know what's going on in your soul. All right? 100% all praises. So real quick, let's go to um, to Romans. 
Romans 10, verse 2 and verse 3. So what happens is that zeal leaves, you start to doubt, and other things start to play a factor. Don't listen, don't think Satan is just going to be like, oh, okay, your zeal is leaving. Okay. <laughs> no. He's trying to solidify some things and seal the damn deal. That's what he's trying to do. And some of us, because we give in to the flesh, have provisions for the flesh, we allow ourselves to take ourselves out. Okay? So read that. Romans 10 and 2. Romans chapter 10 and verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So here's that same zeal again. Because you begin to doubt. Remember, we read it earlier. You stop doing the work. So your zeal starts to fade. You stop doing the work. You begin to doubt. Right? And now this happens. Read it again. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So now the thing is, it's not that you've gone full atheist. You've doubted to the point where that's where heresies come in. That's where, oh, all of a sudden you leave and you become all grand in understanding. No, don't listen. Don't fool yourselves. We have to always remind ourselves, don't fool yourself. If you didn't know anything while you were here, how do you know more now when you leave? That makes no sense. That means Satan fully got you. Now you in all classes, three days, three times a day, seven days a week, commenting how we wicked. You're watching more classes when you leave than when you were here. That's Satan. And and listen, you spend all those hours. Only to say you don't agree. That means you have absolutely nothing going on in life. You are the epitome of a loser. I'm going to tell you straight. How you put more effort into the truth when you're gone from the truth than when you were in the truth? Huh. Okay. So now read that again. For, th for I bear them record. That they have a zeal of God, uh -huh. but, but not according to... Come on. For, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. So you're being ignorant of the truth that Christ called you into. Go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Now what happens is because you doubted, you stopped doing the work, so on and so on. We, we, we went over earlier. You stopped doing those things. Now you want to establish your own righteousness. That's like those brothers. You left here as a brother, but now you're in somewhere else calling yourself an elder. Oh, you crazy. You're establishing your own righteousness now because it wasn't God who gave you that increase. It was Satan. Satan told you when you leave there, you can now be an elder. Elder of what? What are you teaching? You ain't teaching them. You ain't teach nobody when you was here. Now you leave. What you teaching people? Oh, dad, when I think of bunny rabbits do lay eggs and uh, yeah. Brother said Jeremiah 10 about the tree decking silver and gold is talking about IUIC. Uh, or, or you get to uh, you come to the the understanding of Satan that um, David killing ten thousands of Philistines was him converting them to be Israel. Your ass is crazy. That yo, know, it's it's and listen. Here's the thing. He sat right where one of you are sitting. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yes. Hey, Bishop can I say it all the time. Somebody got to be the devil. Somebody. And like you just said, a purge happened. We get a new class. But somebody still got to be the devil. Every group. 
Somebody got to be the devil. If you're going to be the devil, raise your hand. Uh-huh. So, oh, somebody, wait, wait. Somebody raise their hand. Okay, we got one honest brother. We got one. Oh, was a kid? Hey. Just ask, ask Samuel. Ask the prophet Samuel. His kids was a devil. Hopefully your, your child is not. But these kids get the devil on them too. I know he probably just heard raise hand, so he raised his hand. I, I'll let you. I'll let, I, I, won't, I won't get on you too much, little man. Class about to turn to you. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Hey, um, read read that again. Uh, verse two. Verse two. I mean, verse uh, three. Sorry. Verse three. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Mm, so now, Acts fourteen fifteen. Acts 14 and verse 15. Acts chapter 14 and verse 15. And saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. So now, an, a, a synonym for zeal is passion. A synonym for zeal is passion. So many of us lose the passion for the work we were called to do. Does everybody understand that? So read that one more time. And saying, sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you. And preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. So now he says, we are also of like passions passions as you so the men that their the apostles are talking to are those who have a zeal of god but it's not according to knowledge didn't we just read that in romans 10 so he says we're like passions of you but we're going to correct you that your zeal is in the wrong place your zeal is after other gods your zeal is misdirected because we'll go in the street and you'll, we'll deal with, we'll battle with Christians, we'll battle with Muslims or brothers in Islam, and they have a certain passion or zeal, but it's for another God. You understand that? So we too have a zeal. We too have a passion, but we're going to correct you in your misdirection of your zeal. It's not according to knowledge. It's not according to what the Bible says. We're going to show you. But you know what's so funny? Such were some of you. Some of you were the ones hooping and hollering, running up and down the damn pews in church. But on the feast day, you sitting in the corner going over scriptures by yourself. Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Huh? Wait a minute. Good. Wait a minute. So in these Christian churches, they're running up and down in back the pew, flipping. back flipping in the pew. Tossing wigs all the way across from the front to the back. Zealous. But meanwhile, mm. the order comes out pertaining to no hard liquor. Everybody sits down. Oh, you right. Oh, Cap, you in the spirit. I forgot about that. So we, we said no, no strong. No more strong on the feast days. We're going to do wine. But prior to that, when the strong was here, oh, man. I, we, we almost cussed people out that first feast day when we stopped that. Just the wine. Everybody was all somber. Yeah. Yeah, this place right here. Look at it. I ain't looking at them, but I'm looking at them. Yeah. Level 12, it was like level 3. Yeah. Yeah. So you take away certain things that make people uh, 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 turn into another version of themselves, and then you start seeing the real them. Okay, I'm, I'm, I got my eye on all of y'all. My bad eyes. Let me put my glasses back on. They they turned up. They turned up in the church. Y'all, some of y'all were were the, were, the, were the chief tambourine players. Just a bang 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 bang. Any beat, you was like Timberland in the church, making all kind of beats. 
Yeah, they got the whole, the whole action going on. And it was synchronized, too. Six tambourine players, but the beat was fire. Like, how the hell y'all know what beat to play? What the hell? Yeah. And they doing a little skipping thing with their feet. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. Such were some of you. But now you come into the truth, you all somber, this somber ass spirit. Oh, I, I don't say I don't like that. I don't like that thing. Keep your somber spirit over there. Mm -mm. Because here's the thing. You're not saying that you're battling with something. You just have this somber, depressing spirit. Nah, stay over there. Stay over there. Stay, uh, that old song, go that away. Uh, where were we again? Acts 14, 15? Yes, sir. Read it one more time. Verse 15, and saying, sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities mm -hmm. unto the living God. So now, they, you had these certain passions, you had this zeal, but it wasn't according to knowledge. So now we're teaching you what? You got to turn unto the rightful God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, right? So now, Ecclesiastes 33 and verse 27. Uh, as yeah. you're getting that, I just want to mention this, too. Um, you got to examine yourself, man. If you got a social media mm. and a famous rapper happens to drop Bring it out. an album, and his ass ain't never walked through a door of IUIC, but your timeline is filled with how great his music is, and you ain't not there not a once put on there how great the prophet's music is. Damn! You're, you don't even, you ain't got no zeal. You ain't got none. Because if you did, you would enjoy the spiritual psalms, the hymns, like it says. Because that's what they are. They modern day psalms. You would enjoy those things greater than you do the uh, things of the world. But some of you, you ain't got the zeal. So when you hear that old stuff, and it's another thing on the feast days, you know, you be playing Benjavites up in there. You sign them for that one Lily, royalty duo be going. People be in their chair just sitting there talking. Yep. Yep. Play electric slide. Oh, yeah. oh, I've seen the videos down you here see, in the ATL. You I see know. the walkers, the walkers uh, break out. The canes come out. I see them. You get up and you move. Yeah. When the old, when that old man is awakened in you, you get up and move and you start doing electric slide. You don't give a damn if your knees hurt. But if Israel slide come on, the dance floor clears. Damn. Your zeal is lacking. Damn. Damn. It's a lot of cuts that happen to this, to, today on this class. All oh, praises. Um, say cuts from the street. You stupid. <laughs> Uh, Sirach 33 and verse 27, I think it is. Yes, sir. Yep. Sirach ch chapter 33, verse 27. Send him to labor that he be, uh, that he be not idle, mm -hmm. for idleness teacheth much evil. So now, when the zeal is gone, another thing that happens is idleness. You don't want to do anything. And again, when you stop, remember we read it earlier, when you stop doing the work, it's in Sirach 18, you begin to doubt. So all of these things tie in together. The idleness, you begin to doubt, and what do you start learning? Evil things. You start to establish your own righteousness. Now, now you are the grand poobah of a camp of you and another no-doing-nothing brother. Y'all wasn't doing nothing here. Y'all ain't doing nothing there either. And some of these no-doing-nothing camps, too. Your, 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 your whole premise is to talk about IUIC. You know, you know, when we was in the world, and when you spend your time talking about somebody else, you were classified a hater. You were known as a hater. And oftentimes you got punched in the mouth at some point because you spend your time occupied talking about others. That's some of you camps. Some of you camps, you do nothing except talk about IUIC. And listen, I have personally seen your views when you don't talk about IUIC. Some of your videos got, doesn't even break double digits. You have nine views for a video that was released three months ago. Nine views, but you got 17 wives. 
That means even your damn wife ain't watching your videos. Damn. Huh? Huh? You ain't even your favorite wife's teacher. <laughs> your favorite wife's yo. teacher, your, your wife's favorite teacher is in IUIC. Exactly. Don't make no daggone sense. How in the hell you bragging about having 17 wives, but the video you just did got nine views? Your wives, your so-called wives, meaning your side pieces, can't stand your black ashy behind. They're the ones probably putting thumbs down on your video. Cap. <laughs> Cap, they're going to say they watch it together. That's why they ain't got it. Right. Oh, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't watch your own damn videos. Negroes make me sick. <sighs> I'm about to go on a tangent again. Yeah, Maria, thank you. To Cap's a call. Just bring me back. Bring me back. Read that one more time. Send him to labor that he be not idle, for idleness teacheth much evil. Hey, look up the definition of idleness. Look up the definition of idleness. And there's something else I want to. Idleness. Definition of idleness. Okay. Go up a little bit. So it says idleness. You can you see that, Jeremiah? Yes, sir. Okay, read it. Laziness, indolence, a state of inaction. So it's a state of inaction or inactivity, right? Look, look at what some of those soft, soft, uh, synonyms are. Laziness, indolence, slothfulness. So... Right, sluggishness. So what happens is when the zeal leaves, you grow slothful, you grow idle. So it says slothfulness teaches evil. Hope y'all understand that. So when y'all say, oh, I got a slothful spirit on me, guess what? You're telling us you're about to be in the midst of all evil. Y'all understand? You got too much damn time on your hands. That's why we just read it. It says send him to labor. Do the work. Hey, anybody going to be at the school today? Y'all need anything? Can I do this? Can I do that? I'll come down there and be with y'all. Help. Oh, y'all y'all just are buffing the floors? I'll come down there with y'all. Be ready to do some things because... I'm, I'm going to give an example. There's a... There ha, you have those who in the world were called compulsive daters. You know what that is? Compulsive daters, meaning they don't spend any time alone. So when they break up with someone, what do they do? Immediately get into another relationship. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Why can someone be that way? Because too much time alone forces you to examine yourself. So you always need someone there with you to to occupy your mind because your mind is going to either send you far off the deep end or you're going to be forced to deal with the demons in you. Y'all understand that? But there's a difference in the truth. When you are around the godly, the discourse is what? And it's going to force you to get rid of those demons. You work harder to hide your demons than you would if you were to confess them. Y'all know that, right? It's more energy to hide your demons. You think them demons don't want to bust through and come to the surface and expose what you really are? You let that happen on its own. That's why a lot of shame happens here. There was a, I'm going to give it, I've told a story before, but I'm going to give it again. So our first school, there was a brother who was battling with lust, right? Big time. We didn't find out till afterwards. So we're sitting there, you know, after the Sabbath, we all hanging out, sitting in a circle. Like I said, the school, literally our school was the size of the officer's area right there. Literally the entire school was that big, size of the officer area. So, you know, we sitting around after Sabbath. We're like, man, you know, we talking. Class came off. We, you know, we just chilling. We didn't have no kitchen, no nothing. None of that stuff existed. And a sister opens the door and walks into the school. She has on spandex. So we're like, whoa, you think she got the wrong place. So we're like, hey, who's that? So his back was to the door. Who, they were like, like, who's that? I was facing, I was like, who, who's this? What's going on? So brothers inquire, and he, he turns around, he's like, oh, hey, hey, he 
walks out and immediately ushers her outside. So now we go outside. Hey, what's going on? You know, what's this? Your man had a whole girlfriend on the side, sitting there going over scriptures with us, hearing all the marriage classes, hearing all of this. That's how your demons are. They will just bust out and shame you because you're not in the right spirit to get healed. So all your demons is doing is multiplying behind the scenes. It's like one of those uh, bacteria or pathogens. It just You see, you ever seen it under a microscope how it bubbles and just multiplies? That's what the demons are. That's what happens. They just multiply, multiply, multiply. Huh, okay. Yeah, 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 same brother. Okay, good, tell it. <laughs> you know what's so heavy? <laughs> same thing, same brother. We sitting there in a circle, and we we want to go get something to eat, right? After after, after Sabbath, yeah. Now, mind you now, we... <laughs> that is all, you was there? He oh, remembers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, here we are in Atlanta, Georgia, the home of any type of chicken you want. You can go to JJ's, get you some chicken. Yeah. Hell, you go to Ming Ling and get you some chicken. Right. The brother choose, hey, the brother say, hey, we're sitting here, yeah, man, let's go get something to eat. Where, where, where should we go? The brother busts out Hooters. It was like the, the DJ record was like, Arr! we all looked at him like Hooters. He was like, ah, ah. he said, but the wings, though, the wings, the wings. We was like, bro, you crazy. So the signs were there. We were very young at the time. The signs were there. We might have been soldiers. The time was there, but, I mean, the signs were there, but. It took time to fully reveal it. So that's how the demons are. His speech gave away what he was, right? And then the action came later on when the sister came into the school. But read that, uh, Sirach, again. Verse 20, Sirach, chapter 33, verse 27. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for idleness teacheth much evil. So idleness teaches much evil. So send him to labor, that he be not idle. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10. Send him to labor because that labor, and like I said, when you around, even if you hear mop in the school, brothers talking, it's godly discourse. Brothers go grab something to eat. It's godly discourse. Whatever it is, it's godly discourse. And here's the thing. If you with brothers and the discourse isn't godly or upright, somebody or all of y'all got the devil on you. But go ahead. Verse uh, 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. So whatever you find yourself to do in this truth, do it with your full ability. Give it your all. Because you was backflipping in the church. Some of y'all are the ones who had their face painted white with white gloves on doing them little dances huh but you ain't join the zion dancers yet you ain't do not one performance at passover you ain't do nothing huh yeah some of y'all probably got the face pain in your bag right now got the uh, play that please play that play that bro i'm gonna see if i recognize the face behind the paint such were some of you <laughs> Right here. This was some of y'all. Let me show us who you with you. Man, that face looked like one of them sisters over there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's how she walking on the Sabbath, right there. Go back one second. The face. Go back one the second. Face Go back. Like that, spiritually. Stormy days in the rainy days. Don't know all the tears I've cried. See that? Pop locking. I'm telling such was some of you. I don't even know. I don't know what it is. Where does this come? How did they how did they get in the Christian church? Where does it come from? Alright, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Some of y'all about to start catching uh, all type of spirits in here. But look, some of y'all was doing that in the church. 
Some of y'all was doing that in the church. Some of y'all was doing that in the church. Now, y'all don't, y'all won't even get up and dance on a feast day. Ah, what do I know? Continue to read. Verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. This is the point. No. It, does, it doesn't matter how much zeal, well, it does matter, but the zeal that you have now is the swift portion of you running. Does everybody understand that? Your zeal is the swift portion. So you start out every race, you're at your full strength. You can, you can literally surpass everyone in that beginning portion of the race. You start to slow down as the race continues. The longer the race, the slower you become. Everybody understand that? So compare your zeal to, 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 to the first portion that we just read. Read it again. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, mm -hmm. nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, mm -hmm. but time and chance happen it to them all. So now the amount of time that goes into the swift the amount of time that goes into the rich, the time that goes into the, uh, the wise, all of them have time and chance or time and opportunity. All of them. It tells you about, um, about um, a, a man of wisdom is, but through leisure. Right? That's Sirach. Opportunity of leisure, right? So you have free time. But instead of getting with brothers and studying and getting together and, you know, being charitable and visiting the sick brothers. I know some brothers visit like the officer here who's sick. They visit him every week. There's a soldier who's sick. Brothers spring in the Sabbath with them. Things of that nature go over scriptures to keep those brothers encouraged. That is a glorious thing in the eyes of God. So some of you may do that now to help others. But 10, 20 years from now, will you still have that same zeal that you have now? Will you have it then? But continue to read. For a man also knoweth not his time. So nobody knows how much time they're going to endure in this truth or on the earth. Go ahead. As the fishes that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare, uh -huh. so are the sons of men snared in an evil time. So now, so are the sons of men. We don't know if they're going to bust in our doors today and start the Inquisition. We don't know when that's going to be. Go ahead. When it falleth suddenly upon them, mm -hmm. this wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Uh -huh. There was a little city and few men within it, and there came a great king against it. And besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. So now, there was a few men in this city. You know, uh, uh, Solomon said, out of a thousand women, he found none. Out of a thousand men, how many he found? One. Use that analogy, right? So in this city, there's only but a few, right? Go ahead. Verse 15, now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. So the poor is us. We are the poor of God's people. And there's one thing that we, we may not have the money, but these men that's rearing us up, they are not short of wisdom, of the wisdom of God. By no stretch of the word. So these are the few men that are here today. Read. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Uh -huh. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. So the poor man's wisdom is despised because you got to think about it. How were they having counsels against us teaching your nationality? How can they have counsels against us teaching thou shall not kill thou shall not steal <laughs> wouldn't that be helpful for you negroes getting robbed right. you negroes getting shot by stray bullets i would think that's a good thing for you to teach but it says a poor man's wisdom is despised 
yes, we don't have it like Creflo and T.D. Jakes and uh, 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 Joel Osteen. We don't got it like them. But the difference is on our side is the one true living God. So our wisdom is despised. That's fine. But it should be respected, loved, and adorned by those who say they believe. There shouldn't be betrayers in here. There shouldn't be those just abiding their time in here. It should be the believers in here. That's why when you pray, pray for those who mean evil to get the hell up out of here. Don't cry when a brother just stop coming, a sister just stop coming. Your prayers are getting answered. A brother bug out, a sister bug out. Don't, don't shed no tears over that. If you're praying for those damn betrayers to be moved up out of here, when they get moved, you want to cry. Why? Because they ain't tell you they was a betrayer? Shoot. Almost said something else. Go ahead. Read. The poor man's wisdom is despised, uh-huh. and his words are not heard. Mm-hmm. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. So it says the words of the wise are heard in the quiet time more so than what? That more so than the cry of him that ruleth among so, fools. You think more so than Joe Biden? <laughs> because in our secret chamber, what are we doing? We communicating with who? Who? Most high. Most high is hearing these prayers that you brothers and sisters are sending up. Go ahead. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. It says wisdom is better than weapons of war. So you are equipping yourself when you know the level you have in your artillery. If your spirit ain't right, you have to choose the right weaponry to get it back on the right, on the right track. Make sense? That wisdom is the greatest weapon any of us have. Hey, that wisdom is going to save a lot of you brothers from being simps. Bring it out. Huh? Bring it out. Yeah. Because trust me, one of y'all going to pay one of these sisters bills in here. And they have no prospects of marriage. Oh, yeah. One of y'all. He trying to put, they trying to put your vagina on a promissory note, sisters. And some of y'all are going to beguile these brothers to do so. Trust. Some of you are going to give up doing the work of God because you want to stay in bed with the woman all day. I'm, listen, it is what it is. Somebody got to make it true. Huh. Read that again. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, uh-huh. but one sinner destroyed much good. So now, what is, so one sinner destroyeth much good. So now the question is, we went over when the zeal leaves, all the things that can come with it, right? So then the question is, what's next? Your zeal is dwindling. And I, and I, and I actually told y'all at the very beginning of class is one of the first statements I made. What's next? Anybody? Nobody paid attention? Nobody wrote it down? <laughs> Not one. Okay, you got one brother over there. Let's see if one brother paid attention. Oh, Abdiel. Uh, shalom, leadership. Shalom. So your zeal dwindle, you become idle, and uh, then you, uh, you seek out your, your own... Uh, your own righteousness. Okay. So you start drawing people away, trying to draw people away from their righteousness to, to, to you. So, no, I think, I think I framed the question wrong. What do you, how do you come back from that? What has to kick in? That's my question. What has to kick in to not go down that deep rabbit hole? Discipline. Okay, I like that, discipline. Who, who got something else? Aaron. A uh, level of examination as well. Okay. Okay, level of examination. Right in front of you, right there. The fear of God. Fear of God, okay. Anybody else? I mentioned it in the beginning of class. Uh, shalom, leadership. Studying. Studying, okay. Uh, come back, come on this side, Malachi. Come on. Come on. What has to kick in? Your faith. My mellow, my man. That has to kick in. Your zeal 
is the swiftness. Give me that when Paul said it. This race is not for the swift. Paul said it as well. So your fate, your zeal got you sprinting. All right? You're sprinting. You're at all the MOVs. You're at Camp 101. You're doing this. Sisters is doing this, doing that. You are on fire. But as time goes on, you begin to kind of separate. You don't come around as much. It's harder to get in contact with you. Right? Everybody know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not making this stuff up. It gets harder. and Before somebody leaves, it, they, it's harder and harder to get in contact with them. You call them, they, they answer you in text, like, but you never return my call. Like, some stuff, you know, it's a little lengthy to go through in text. These are all signs. You got that, Jeremiah? Uh, you're looking for Philippians 3, sir? Go ahead. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, mm -hmm. but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind mm -mm. and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Right. The, the race. He, I ran my race. Of First oh, Corinthians cool. 9 and Thank 24. You. First Corinthians 9. I, I think I quoted it wrong. My bad. My bad. Brother, you don't got spiritual powers to read my mind? Is <laughs> that <laughs> so First Corinthians what? 9 and 24. Thank you, bro. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, mm -hmm. but one receiveth the prize. Mm -hmm. So run that ye may obtain. So it says, all run the race. But not everyone is going to obtain the prize. But you got to run the race. A lot of us give up running the race. Paul doesn't say how long the race is. You have to continue to run the race that you may obtain the prize. Go ahead. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Uh -huh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. So now, I'm telling you, boy. Paul was a deep Benjamin. So some worked harder to obtain worldly achievements than they do to obtain godly achievements. I'm, hey, Paul was saying something right here. So at your job, you got your picture up every month. You get your little parking spot in the front because you're employee of the month. But in the truth, you're not doing nothing. 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 Go ahead. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep hey, under my body. Hold on. You, you, no, bring it out. The one he, he, he uh, 2 Timothy 4, and it's, uh, it's verse 7. That was cold for that one, too. Like, 2 Timothy 4, for. verse 7. Yep. 2 Timothy Chapter 4 and verse 7. Yeah, that's the one. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have done what? Kept the faith. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <sighs> that's saying something about Paul right there. He says, listen, when you read, was it uh, 2 Corinthians 11? When he lists everything that he went through, perils by brethren, false, uh, false brethren by the by heathen, shipwrecked, all of that. He's reminding us, despite all of that, he kept what? I have kept the faith. Damn. Go ahead. You know what? That's, that's so heavy because you read all the acts that Paul did, all the letters, all the places he traveled. We got to remember there was not planes to get there in two hours those were long boat rides and he mentioned them a few of them crashed and he was out there in the middle of the sea and he got on a piece of wood and floated his ass to the land and in order to do in order to go through that time and time and time again it can get wearisome on your spirit yes, sir. the only thing that's going to keep you going on when those trials and tribulations keep coming one after another the lord ain't letting up because you done did so much wickedness in the world like Paul did. He's like, man, I got to put you through this. So you got to pay for those things that you've done. But at the end, you're going to receive the crown like he's talking about. In order to get to that and finish the, the race that you are, are in, that we've all been called in, you have to keep the faith. 
because it will wear down on that fleshly body of yours in your mind. The only thing that will get you through that is you keeping the faith. So Paul's letting us know that in that time, during that time, we read it where he was glorifying in that, but at the same time, he's like, man, shit. Oh, God, man, here we go another time. You're not here on the ship. I hope this one don't crash. Damn, it crashed again. You know what? Matter I got of fact, the faith. When the ship is about to crash, he yells, oh, not again. Yeah, not again. Lord, not again. Lord's like, yep, what you going to do? Paul said, I'm going to keep the faith. Damn. Hey, we should. So real quick, with read it, don't, Jeremiah, we're going to come back here, right? But go back to Mark chapter 4 to tie it back in. And then we're going to go to that 2 Corinthians 11 so you can see what Paul stated. Mark 4 and 6. Yeah, yep, 17. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So now immediately they leave. But Paul, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. Let's let's go. I want to read them all because um, where is it? Twenty-two. Yep. Started. Yeah. Started. Uh, twenty-two. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-two. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. So he says, in labors more than anybody else. <laughs> wow. And here's the thing. Apostles were in place already before Paul was called. And he's saying, listen, the labors that I put in, I lost sleep. I lost uh, 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 soundness in my flesh. I lost, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah. He, but what I'm saying, he, he lost a, some of himself to gain the spirit of Christ. You have to be willing to lose in order to gain. Go ahead. In stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in debts off. He says, you know how many times, you know how many times I was either put to death or had near death experiences? So I don't understand how today Brothers are offended for the word's sake and leave. You haven't even been through this, the second verse we just read. You have not been through, had, you have not had many stripes. You have not been in prison and you have not seen near death experiences. It hasn't happened to you. So all of them that left, they were only set to endure for a time. They had no faith. They only had the zeal. That's it. And you know what's funny? Some of them brothers who left, they were here 12 years. The brother just dropped his head. He was like, damn, I've been here two months. Damn. <laughs> yes. It says endure for a time. And I mentioned the time doesn't say months. It doesn't say years. Because what's the optimal goal? To endure until the end. Anything short of the end was only for a time. So if you don't endure until you drop dead or, or the Messiah returns, it was only set for you to endure 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. That's the time. Go ahead. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. So his own people... His own people, the Jews, afflicted Paul. Go ahead. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once now, was I... Now, now, uh, look, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't understand. A brother was corrected by an officer who was younger than him chronologically. You know, he was an older man. The officer was younger, but he was older than him in the spirit. The officer was here long before him, but he was younger in age. He was offended that the officer called him out that he wasn't doing his duties. And he left. 
He was offended and left. What's going to happen when we start getting beaten with rods of iron? What's going to happen when we start getting imprisoned? I know some of y'all marvel at betrayers now. Oh, some of y'all yourselves going to be betrayers. Let that first whip crack on you. Let, let it. Let them, sisters, let them tell you we're going to send children's services to your house and take your kids if you don't betray them. Some of y'all are going to be like, yeah, I ain't taking my kids. Them IUIC Negroes get together on a Sabbath day at this location. <laughs> Listen, all praises to the Lord, we ain't doing no evil in here. So all y'all can become is not betrayers, but false witnesses. False witnesses. You're going you're gonna to lie. You're going to cheat. You're going to steal. You're going to set up. You're going to plant all kind of evil in here in order to make us look guilty. But let God be glorified in all things. You're performing what Satan set you up to do. So like Paul, uh, Christ told Judas, what thou will do, do it quickly. Do it quickly. You trying to set, set up, or, or wait, wait, remember the bishop brought out the brother who planted something in the ceiling of the bathroom? Yeah, the drugs. Go ahead. Do it quickly. So that your lot can be sealed. That's all you're doing. You, you're doing it to yourself. Huh. What do I know? Read. Verse 25. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Mm. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often. In Wait, in what? In journeyings often. Some of you brothers ain't never left your local camp. Never. You got men's conference. You got various things that go on all over the world. And guess what you always saying? It's work. I don't got a babysitter. I don't got this. I don't got that. Paul says these things are only going to be suffered sometimes when you have to journey somewhere else. Leadership was in prison when they went to Cuba. Cuba said, nah, nah, we don't get down. You ain't no free speech here. Click, clank. All you heard was the, was the, was the jail gate clank. Then it all sinks in like, wow. But you know what? Just like they, in Acts, when they glorified, when they were beaten, guess what? We rejoice this day as well when it happens to us. Go ahead. Oh, go, you gotta say something? Oh, go ahead. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, mm -hmm. in perils by the heathen, mm. in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, mm. in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Damn. Damn. Somebody got to be the false brethren. Somebody. Because in order to be a false brethren, guess what you have to be? You have to know something about the person you're going to be a false witness of. You have to know a little bit that your story can be believable. So some of you, like we read earlier, or the, is that friend for occasion just to find out enough about someone to, be, to show yourself to be a false brethren. Y'all understand? Find out where that person lives, where that person works, what that person's uh, salary is, whatever the case may be. You just want to find out just enough that you can paint a false narrative that others may believe. Go ahead. In weariness and painfulness, in watching... Why, why, why is Paul, and Cab's a car touched on it, why is it weariness? Why is it weariness? You don't think getting beaten so much, shipwrecked all the time, uh, betrayed by false brethren, be, uh, uh, attacked by the heathen, you don't think that wears, wears down your spirit? Paul says, listen, I had to really check my spirit many times because it was getting wearisome to me. Go ahead. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often. Hey, you know what? We read about the beatings but we don't think about the beating two days later. It's actually worse days later. Y'all know that, right? That's like, what, I'm just using a light example. When you go to the gym, that first day you work out, do you feel it that first day? Not really. Wait till about day two or three. You can't walk. You're feeling tightness in places you didn't know existed. So imagine that coming from a beating. You're beaten with rods. 
Yeah, you're going to feel the pain initially, but wait two days, two, three days later. Oh, that thing is agonizing. Go ahead. In watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often. You know, some of y'all need to miss a meal. Uh -oh. Huh? Check it out. Some of y'all need to miss a meal. Paul said, in hunger and thirst. These are ways he suffered, meaning he had nothing to eat, nothing to drink. Let that be the first way you suffer. Miss a damn meal from now and then. Eating five, six, eight, nine, ten times a day. Miss one. So you can see what it is when they take that from you. Go ahead. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. In what? Cold and nakedness. Have, have many of us had to really suffer in the cold? Or suffer without any kind of covering? No. No. Go ahead. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I don't think they get it, Kev. Read it again. Beside those things that are without, that, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. The chair. So now, not only, and this is something that people don't fathom. Those leaders set up over you. Do you know they're going through trials just like you're going through trials? And some are not considerate at all. You will call a leader at three in the morning. Hey, brother, wake up out of sleep. You got to be a key. You got to leave for camp at eight in the morning. He just finally went to sleep. He worked 12 hours. They work 12 hours just like y'all work 12 hours, right? Hey, bro, what's going on? Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to call and say shalom. Uh, I was just calling you because I had a dream, and uh, I, I wanted to know if you can interpret it for me. You roll, uh, wipe the sleep out your eye, crack your eye just a little bit because you don't want to wake up, mess up your sleep. Man, it is 3.42 in the damn morning. Why are you calling me? Uh, uh, I'll, ca I'll call you back. Yeah, yeah, you right. You right. My bad. My bad don't make you go back because I can't go back to sleep after that. I can't. I can't. I can't. The little, the little bit, and you know, that's, and they always do it right when the sleep got good. Ah, oh, you finally, you know, you just you got off clubhouse. You finally start going to sleep. Took a nice hot shower. You like, yes, okay. The first snore. You know, that's the first good one right there. Ring, ring, ring. Hey, hey, bro, everything all right? You in jail or something? What's going on? Nah, nah, nah. I just want to know if you was up. What's going on? Bro, we couldn't do this tomorrow. Like, you sure you are? You battling something? Nah, nah, nah. I just call a check on you. At 3.30 in the damn morning. My Lord. Yeah, be considerate. Tells you that Sirach, too. A man of understanding. Be will be considerate. Yeah, be a man of understanding will be considerate. So now, what are, we, what are we going over here? Go back to the Corinthian, I mean, the Timothy. Where did we read, uh, Cap? Timothy 4. Go back to Timothy 4 now. Verse 7. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So now what we just read was all that Paul had to endure and still handle the affairs of the church. So think about this. While he's gripping that piece of wood for his dear life, he had to still think about when he finally makes it to shore where he has to go to teach the gospel. I want y'all to think about that. When many of us go through affliction, we put the work of the Lord to the side. We put the Bible down. Paul is a, Paul is a hell of an example for us to look at and say, damn, I'm not going through that. So when I go through my little stuff, why am I putting the Bible down? Why am I saying I'm not going to camp 101? I'm not getting with brothers. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Why do we do that? When we should be drawing closer to the Lord. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh unto thee. But we say, nah, I ain't going to go in that word. I ain't going to do that. Nah, I'm not going to call Cap. Just chop it up. Talk to him. Get some wisdom. I ain't going to do that. 
I'm not going to do that. But Paul says all that he went through, his daily thought was the care of the churches. Good. Hey, real quick. Hey, Officer Alicia, you got that? Because you... Captain Shemai, you keep touching on that. And many of our brothers and sisters still have that Christian mentality thought process of the stories that your pastor told you that do not go hand in hand with the Bible. You got that picture I sent you in Telegram? Hey, go to Acts 27 real quick. Just for time. Time said y'all can read it on your own. I'm just going to skim through it. Uh, this is what Cap is going into pertaining to the shipwreck of Paul. All right. So in verse 10, I'll read it. It says, and said unto them, sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the ladding of the ship, but also of our lives. So Paul is already letting them know during this time period in this season, it's not wise for us to go forth in our travels. All right. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter, and commodious means cozy or comfortable, okay, to, uh, to, to dock, to port. I got to write that down. Oh, yeah. That word it's, wasn't a normal Negro <laughs> word. It says, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain Phineas, Phineas, and there to winter, which is in haven of Crete and lieth towards the southwest and the northwest. Okay, verse 13, it says, and when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tumultuous wind called Eurocliden. Can you put this up right here? Put, let the brothers and sisters see this online because what you said, Captain Shemai, is heavy. Brothers just think, hey, the ship crashed and he was just floating on wood, on calm seas. No, during this time of autumn in that region around Italy, Crete, generally there's a storm that goes through. No difference than you'll get the, the storms that come around August here. You have a lot of hurricanes, right? A, a, a tornado alley and a lot of hurricanes. The same thing applies here. So Paul knew the seasons. Look, it's not good for us to travel. Let's dock here. But I want you brothers and sisters to see what this is. That word Eurocliden is a damn hurricane. I don't think y'all brothers understand that. Christianity teaches you, hey, the ship wrecked. They were just chilling. Paul was just in the middle of the deep. Scroll up so they can see the picture. Because this is exactly where Paul was around Italy, Sicily, in that area. You see the eye of the storm right there? Y'all brothers don't understand what Paul went through, what your forefathers went through, how they labored. But the key point with what you said, Captain Shemaiah, jump down to verse 26, 22. We'll start at 21. It says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loathed from Crete and to, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. So Paul still kept the faith. Regardless of what he, bro, he went through a damn hurricane. He's out there in a hurricane. You don't know what's underneath you. You don't know what's coming on top of you. You don't understand the factor of this wind. This wind mass is crazy, bro. Y'all seen the images of Katrina. But Christianity paints it that he's just floating like on an inner tube. No, bro, you in some deadly wind, gale force wind. All right, but y'all brothers ain't been through nothing, so why would you give up the faith? Why would you give up the faith? Now, nah, I'm not going to call Captain Shemar. You ain't in no gale force winds. Y'all don't understand nothing. Y'all ain't been touched by nothing as of yet. So we got to get ourselves, get your minds in order. Read, read the history of your forefathers. These men, through, they, they went through much. In turn, y'all going to go through much. Prepare yourselves. That was bad, Cap. That was cold-blooded. Eurocliden. Damn. <laughs> I like that thing. So Paul, so basically, so Paul was hanging for dear life, literally in the eye of a hurricane. Damn. So it wasn't, it wasn't when the shipwreck happened, it wasn't not again. It was, uh, most high just turned it up. Before it was a normal shipwreck, this go around, it was because of a hurricane. Damn. Hey, I don't think there's any precepts to bring after that.
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!